The uh, world that I practice in is the shopping center world and the retail world. And our job is to get you to spend more money and more time in uh, a place that you don't necessarily like to be in. Uh, our business has to compete with lots of things that you do with your time and we have to come up with gimmicks to get you to shop. My son goes to school in Scotland and this is where he gets his hair cut. He gets a free shot of whiskey uh, every time he gets a haircut. Uh, last, two years ago we got women to buy more shoes by breaking away from black and going to color. And this year we think we're going to get you to buy more clothing by uh, implementing what we call vanity sizing. We test marketed this in Kansas last year and we found that by reducing your dress size by one size from a four to a, from a six to a four, that most of you will give your wardrobes away and buy a new wardrobe. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's probably the low point of what we do, but uh, we have to always compete with your time to get you to shop. The average family only spends 4% of their budget on apparel and 5% on restaurants and entertainment. The other parts of your budget are fixed. And when gas prices go up or when there's a recession or when the stock market goes down, immediately people stop shopping. And those of you that are in a small business have to compete with these variables uh, for your livelihood. In America, our other problem is that we have 20 square feet of retail per person compared to the next largest countries in the world. We have too much retail in the United States. Now on the other hand, these countries are, have too little retail in large part due to very strict land use zoning. In the United Kingdom, you just can't go out and buy a nice uh, swamp or wetland or wooded area and fill it and bulldoze it and build a nice shopping center. It's protected and you have to build within a city. Shop, building shopping is very, very tricky. Uh, this developer uh, lost hundreds of millions of dollars. This town center, which was built up by the Mackinac Bridge in northern Michigan, uh, looks like this, lost the city about $80 million in two years because they broke all of the fundamental retailing rules. It was built here instead of on the busier street. It was unanchored. It didn't even have a street going through it. And there were a number of things that happened that made it uh, likely to fail, and it did fail. In America, we are still building a lot of retail. Our largest retailer in the next five years will be Kohl's in terms of number of new store openings. For the first time in the last 30 years, Another store is outpacing Walmart in terms of new construction. Kohl's, uh, as you know, is a very mid-priced department store reflective of the market. In the United States, these are the new store openings in terms of number of stores. Subway and Starbucks, for example, are leading the pack. But two of the stores are dollar stores. Dollar stores are huge and it's one of the growth industries right now in our business. The shopping center world pivots around the International Council of Shopping Centers. If you're not a member, I would encourage you to join or at least go on their website. Most of what I tell you is available on the website under the publications column. This is the International Council of Shopping Centers. Now, twice a year, there are two major conferences where most of the leasing in the United States is done. More than half of all leases get started either in Las Vegas in the spring or in New York in the winter. And it's a very closed loop system. Retailers don't get in a car and drive around the country looking for a for rent sign and then writing down the phone number and calling to open a new store. They go through brokers. And uh, the, the brokers only bring them stores in which uh, it meets their site selection criteria. And uh, it just doesn't happen by happenstance that a downtown gets the retail that you're looking for. And the fact that Santa Cruz may or may not have shops you want is probably not reflective of your market. It's probably reflective of you not being inside of that loop. Now, there's been a major change in the last uh, six months. The process for opening a store went something like this. 
the head of, let's say, um, the head of, let's say, a bookstore. The head of a bookstore would receive a call from Wall Street, and Wall Street would say, in order for your stock price to stay up, you have to open 100 more stores in the next two years. You have to have growth. And the head of the, uh, the company would call his development directors and say, each of you have to open 10 more stores in the next two years, otherwise you're fired. And they would call their broker and say, you have to find me 10 more sites, and those sites have to perform well, and they have to open on August 15th, Otherwise, I won't go with you again and you'll never do another deal with us. It was market driven by Wall Street, the growth was driven by Wall Street. Today, Wall Street is calling and saying, you better close 100 new stores in the next, hundred year, in the next two years, otherwise your stock's gonna go down. And so a lot of the growth has not been market demand. For example, Kohl's is still planning to open 500 new stores but uh, they're, going, they're delaying all of these by about two years. In terms of uh, categories, we're still going to be opening more apparel and more shoes than any of the other categories. There's only uh, plans for 200 more bookstores during the next five years.